Hey guys, welcome back to Hall Guys Star Rail. In today's video, we're doing our guide for Dan Imbibita Lune. Now, this guy is pretty complex when we look at his energy and stuff like that, with multiple basic attacks that generate different amounts of energy. And the builds that I'm going with are the best ones I found to use with him personally. But keep in mind, there could be some other crazy builds that we do see in the future, and I will let you guys know if we see it. Along with that, like with every new character, we get a code. So I'll leave that code in the pinned comment and the description. Go ahead and get your free jades. Now we're going to take a look at his skills. Now his skills are all intertwined together to make his synergies work. So I'll go through all his skills and then we'll talk about it as a combined package at the end. So first off, we'll kick it off with his basic attack. Now he has four different forms of basic attack which get enhanced by him using his skill. So the first form is a standard basic attack where you just do a basic attack, it's a two hit combo on a single enemy and it generates him a skill point or your team a skill point and it also generates him 20 energy. Now, if you have one skill point enhanced into his basic attack, uh, it will consume that one skill point. It will do a three hit combo on a single enemy and generate him 30 energy. Now, when we go past that, if you enhance his basic attack to the third form or the two skill point consumption form, it's going to become a blast ability where it's going to have some cleave on it. So the main damage on the primary target with a little bit of damage on the adjacent enemies. And for this one, it's going to generate him 35 energy and do a five hit combo. Then if we max out his basic attack, give it three skill points, he's going to consume those three skill points. He's going to do a seven hit combo, which is once again going to do that cleave type damage. Uh, and it's also going to generate him 40 energy energy. Just keep in mind that that cleave damage on the two skill point cost and the three skill point cost only comes from the fourth hit onwards with his comboing on his attacks. So now we have his skill. So his skill is what he's going to use to queue up the skill point consumption on his basic attack. It doesn't, the skill points don't get consumed until he actually uses that basic attack and it's going to change the form. They all have fancy names. I'm not going to do it because I'm just going to tongue tie myself. But the thing to remember with this is when you're doing the two skill point consumption or three skill point consumption uh, basic attack from using his skill, the skill adds this effect where from the fourth hit of his combo, he starts gaining stacks of dominating raw, which is going to increase his crit damage up to a maximum of four stacks. So basically what this is telling you is if you get use the three skill points, use the three skills to enhance his basic, he's going to get a lot more damage because he's going to get the seven hit combo and start scaling up that damage. Next up, we have his talent. Now, this one is another one that's going to add to that stacking combo damage, similar to what his skill does with the crit damage. For this one, every time he unleashes an attack in a combo, he's going to gain a damage dealt increase and it stacks up to six times. So once again, comboing going to be important. So next up, we're looking at his ultimate. Now, this thing has a pretty hefty 140 energy cost. It's going to do a three hit attack. Keeping in mind, we're getting those comboing from his talent on the three hits. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to do clear damage so big damage on primary target smaller damage on adjacent targets but the big thing about his ultimate is it's going to give him two stacks of bear me bear with me while we say this because i'm only going to say ss or squama from now on but it's squama sacrosancta is the buff it gives him and it gives him two stacks of it and what this squama sacrosancta i think i hope i'm saying that right what it does is it basically acts as free skill points for him so after he ults he gets essentially two free skill points to use on his next enhanced basic attack and now we have his technique now this one is one of those ones you can use outside of combat and it makes it when you use his attack outside of combat he does like a dash forward and what happens is and then this lasts for 20 seconds and when you come in contact with an enemy while doing this entering combat he will deal damage to all enemies and also gain himself one stack of that squama sacrosancta okay so with all his skills out of the way i just wanted to summarize them into one because they all sort of work together as to, to be like one little package so essentially what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to stack his skills uh ideally up to three to get the maximum damage which is going to give him his beefy basic attack his fully enhanced basic attack which will give him extra crit damage once he goes past four stacks in his hit combo then on top of that we're also going to gain that talent, which is going to give him increased damage dealt per combo hit that he does. So it's those three things that just work together where they're three different abilities, but they all work together into one sort of package where it's basically 
you want to use skill points to do a big enhanced basic attack, which is going to have boosted crit damage and boosted damage dealt, then his ult is going to be that really nice thing to get him the extra skill points so that he can rinse and repeat this through as many times as possible. Now we're going to take a look at his traces. Honestly, his trace tree is quite fantastic. We get some uh, resistance to control effects, which is always going to be a nice effect. We get an extra 15 energy at the start of battle, and he's going to deal increased crit damage to enemies who are weak to imaginary now the stats he gets are also fantastic we have imaginary damage and crit rate which you definitely want to pick up we also have some hp in there but you know that's if you're if you need it grab it if not it doesn't really matter but the the two dealing adding to his damage are going to be important especially the crit rate when we look at his build a bit later on now as for the actual skills themselves that you want to enhance with his traces the one i prioritize most is going to be his basic attack because it is the one doing the bulk of the damage for him after that i look towards the talent and after the talent is going to be the skill and also the ultimate but in general you can level them all up pretty evenly due to the cost of them and away you go next up we have his relics now what i'm going to recommend as a general good splashable set is going to be the musketeer of wild weight increases his attack his speed and his basic attack damage which is key because he's all about that basic attack now depending on your team and what you have you can also go with wastelanders it's going to give you that imaginary damage now you're going to require having debuffs on the enemy with this one so you know if you're running in with like a pella or a silver wolf uh you'll be able to get that extra 10 percent crit rate but they do need to be imprisoned to get the 20 percent extra crit damage so just keep that in mind you'll have to be breaking to get that uh with him or teaming him up with a welt which isn't one of my optimal strategies but this is definitely an option now you can also two piece with two piece if you've got gear with better stats um by doing it that way and another one you can consider as well if you're just piecing together and you've got godly substats on some of these is going to be a two piece a set of messengers because it does give that speed now it's not optimal the one i would definitely recommend for most players is just going to be four piece musketeer of wild wheat it's just pretty basic for him and pretty strong now as for the main stats on these pieces for the body you're going to want to go with crit rate or crit damage depending on how many crit subs you have if you have his light cone it's obviously going to be a bit easier because it has a ton of crit in it um but in general it's crit rate or crit damage ideally you want to be getting this guy up above 70 percent crit rate which we'll talk about when we look at the planner ornaments as for his feet it depends on the situation we'll talk about this more in team building but you can go with speed or attack on this depending on the rest of your team and how fast they are it's a bit of a there's no one size fits all for this one it's kind of like if you don't have the skill points for him make him a bit slower or your team a bit faster and those are the sort of needles you have to move to adjust him to work but we'll talk about that more later on but attack and speed will both have their place with dan now for planner ornaments a uh, rutilant arena dude i suck at saying that name I, I suck at saying a lot of things but this one is going to be my recommendation it is the new crit one that we have and this is why i said with the chest, you're looking at crit rate or crit damage depending on your substats and the levels of crit that you can achieve because this one is going to increase your crit rate by 8%, but you need to get the other effect, you need to have that 70% crit rate, which is going to increase the basic attack and skill damage by 20%, but it's that basic attack that we really want to buff with him. So this is the one you're going to be looking to on the orb. Ideally, imaginary damage, but attack is also okay if you have godly substats on an attack orb, um, but ideally, you do want that imaginary damage. Uh, and then for the rope, I'm going to recommend attack. It's just the most splashable way and good way I found to play him. I definitely think someone will come up with some crazy strategy using energy regeneration in the future. I couldn't get it to work and feel like I'm dealing enough damage, but uh, definitely something to consider. Hopefully, we see something crazy with that in the future. As we look into light cones, his signature light cone is is going to be pretty huge for him a free 18 percent crit rate and like i mentioned we do want to be achieving that 70 percent which this is really going to help along with all his traces and stuff like that uh but then on top of that every time he uses the basic attack he gets a stack of the buff and the buff is 18 percent attack and also six percent energy regen it can only stack up to twice but pretty quickly this this cone is essentially just giving him 18% crit rate 36 percent attack and also 12 percent energy regeneration and as we mentioned before, energy regeneration is going to be nice with this guy because he does have a 140 ultimate cost. 
As for free-to-play players, I definitely recommend On the Fall of an Eon. This is Herder's Shop Light Cone, and you can max it out fairly easily, which it does give really strong buffs to attack and damage dealt. Unfortunately, we don't get that crit rate in there, but it's honestly your best option as free-to-play. Now, also for five stars, if you've RNG'd your way into Clara's Light Cone, you could also slap that on him, getting some attack buff and damage dealt increase. And if I had to recommend a four-star, it would probably be Under the Blue Sky, giving the attack increase, and upon defeating enemies, you're going to get that that crit rate up but in general i just feel like herder's store light cone is going to be the best option for most free-to-play players now we're going to take a look at his eidolons as always these are not 100 needed you don't have to get these but if you are you've got some good ones incoming at level one we're going to increase the number of the righteous heart stacks by four and he gets one extra stack whenever he gains it per hit and basically that one is his damage increase from his passive so you're just going to get a higher damage increase on him then at number two i feel like this is going to be one of the big ones after using his ultimate, he basically advances his action forward 100%. It's not a grant additional turn. It is a 100% action forward. And he's going to gain one extra Squama Sacrosancta stack. Dude, I suck at saying that thing. But he's going to get an extra stack. But this is going to make him very interesting. You're going to want to have a really skill point efficient team. But... It's going to make him use his enhanced basic a lot more. Then we go into level four. Buffs provided, provided by Dominating Raw persist until the end of the character's next turn. That is going to be his crit damage increase. And then finally, at level six, after any other ally uses their ultimate, the imaginary resistance penetration of him is going to be increased for his next Fulgrant Leap, which is his big enhanced basic, by 20% stacking up to three times. And res pen is a huge thing, so that's probably going to be a big damage increase but once again if you're free to play be happy sticking at e0 and enjoy the character okay so now we're going to look at teams for dan now teams are all about skill point efficiency for him and there's sort of a formula you can look to to building a team for this guy which is going to be obviously he's going to take up one position and the next position is going to have to be filled with a main supporting unit for your survival. So that's going to be Luocha and Bailu are my top two picks because they get to basic attack a lot. They don't have to use skills as much as something like Natasha. Now, Natasha's a bit more unforgiving because she does have to skill more to get the heals up, whereas the other two have passives that allow their healing to continue on. Now, Japard is another one because you can just basic attack with Japard. He takes all the aggro and you can maintain shields um, and he can be your solo sustain unit. But for me, that's not not the most enjoyable way to play it because it's a bit stressful if you do start taking some damage but those are your options just keep in mind in the future we do have Fu Shuen coming in the next patch which she may be able to fit in like a solo sustained unit and then we also do have Lynx who could be your healer as well so we have more options coming but my favorite two from testing were Luoja and Bailu uh, then after that the next slot is going to be your primary support for him now I personally like Ting Yun the most because she does get him extra energy as well which can boost him up and allow him to get that ult ultimate more often which is going to get him those extra squama stacks which is going to give him free skill points essentially so my free to play option there uh is going to be ting yun she's my favorite but pella and yukong both have great synergies as well pella can just basic attack spam and use her ultimate to defense shred and then yukong can just basic attack spam and then sometimes if you have the skill points allowing you can use her skill when it lines up with her ultimate now as for the five star options we have silver wolf and we have bronya now bronya's playstyle is a bit unique which we'll talk about in a sec um but silver wolf is just another great support that is skill point positive use her skill once then you're going to be using two basics you're going to get a ton of defense shred and obviously depending on the puzzle pieces of the enemy team you can make the weakness suit you and you can get that effect that silver wolf always has now the next spot after that we've gone through dan we've gone through the main support and we've gone through uh sorry the main defensive support being your healer or shielder and then we've gone through your main offensive support which are those five units we just talked about now your final slot can be another one of these units again um, being a high skill point generator because you really want this final slot to generate skill points for him because he wants to use his three stack all the time now you also have defensive options provided Japard isn't your solo sustain you can use him because once again he's a basic attack spammer that can also add to your defensive but 
The Fire MC is definitely another option. It just basic, basic attack spam with that character, plus gives you a bit more shielding, a bit more survival if you, that's where your account is at. So if you've got a well-progressed account, you're probably going to go with the second supportive option, offensive supportive option. But if your account's not as stacked, you might need that second defensive option. So now I want to look at teams. So this is one team, which is the Bronya Core. Once again, this last position, it's completely up to you which one you want to put there. I don't think there's like one must-have unit in this formation that I found. They all worked pretty well with those other supportive units but the thing with this one is with Bronya and massive shout out to Grimo Gotcha definitely go check him out I'll leave him linked in the description um, he, he let me know about this strategy which I absolutely love which is having Dan one speed faster than your Bronya so that Dan can use his basic attack and then Bronya can buff him with her skill and then he can go into a triple enhanced basic with the Bronya buff and still be skill point efficient so that is a really cool synergy that you guys can test out if you want to um, using the Bronya and Dan, but it does require Dan being faster than Bronya. Then we have the more free to play option that I decided to slap in here. This is a more free to play option where I've put in the Fire Trailblazer as a defensive unit in this slot, thinking a count may not be as progressed. Also, the Fire Trailblazer will help with survival and hopefully mean that you don't have to use Natasha's skill as much because that's the problem. What happens with Natasha is when you have to use her skill more often. So that's why I've made this one a bit more of a balanced team. Um, and the idea here is you'll skill him with uh, Ting Yun and then he will have his buffs and then also Ting Yun obviously going to give him that extra energy for the extra ults which is fantastic but then Ting Yun's going to do two basic attacks so she's going to generate then hopefully Natasha can basic attack as much as possible generating extra skill points and then obviously a fire MC is also just going to be a basic attack spamming slave to generate skill points for him. Now with this type of team the big thing that you've got to look to is speed. Uh, essentially, if you're finding that you're not generating enough skill points for Dan, you want to speed up the rest of your team or slow Dan down him himself. So those are the two sort of um, levers you have to pull to adjust the skill point generation for Dan himself. Now, obviously, we've got different breakpoints like the 134 speed if you want to get two turns in the first cycle and stuff like that. But ignoring the, the cycling and trying to zero cycle, cycle push and stuff like that, the, the two knobs are basically lower his speed or speed the rest of your team up so that you have more skill points by the time it is his turn. And that is going to cover it for Dan Imbibitor Lune. This guy is honestly a ton of fun. I love the skill point consumption thing. Uh, and honestly, he also does a truckload of damage, but definitely needs some maintenance on your team to sort it out to make sure he is playing efficiently. efficiently. But once you've got it down pat, the dude is a monster. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.